Although I am a fan of the Back to the Future movie franchise, I don't own much of the merchandise, mainly because we didn't get any related toys back in the 80s. In fact, until very recently, my collection literally consisted of this t-shirt and a Blu-ray copy of the film trilogy. So when I saw these 1-24 to scale die-cast DeLorean models in Kmart recently, I just had to pick them up. And today we're going to crack these out of the box, take a close-up look at each and every one of them, from Back to the Future, Back to the Future Part 2, and Back to the Future Part 3. Come with me, toy fans. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome to Analog Toys, where we're obsessed with bringing you the history of vintage toys and action figures. When I stumbled across this collection of die-cast Back to the Future DeLoreans in Kmart a few weeks ago, they were for sale at the bargain price of $12 each. And that price is in Australian dollars, which equates to about $25 US dollars for the entire set. And who could say no to that? These models are designed and manufactured by a Hong Kong-based company named Welly Die Casting Factory Limited. Each of the three DeLoreans are supplied in window display packaging, with each iteration having a unique box. To remove the DeLorean model car from the packaging, you simply slide out the cardboard insert, and on the underside you'll find two screws, which are easily removed with the use of a Phillips head screwdriver. Each of the DeLoreans also comes with an accessory, which we'll talk about later, but it's worth noting that these accessories can be found taped to the underside of the cardboard insert. Let's start by taking a look at the DeLorean from the first Back to the Future movie. The 1 to 24 scale makes this DeLorean approximately 7 inches in length, and I'm very impressed with the amount of detail packed into a model this small, and the lines on this car are simply gorgeous. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? Although this is advertised as a die-cast metal model, it should be noted that only the main body is die-cast, with most of the added details being manufactured from either plastic or some type of cast resin. The rims look beautiful and are very accurate to the real thing, with the details on the back of the time machine being intricate and quite incredible. The hinged gullwing doors both open, revealing a wealth of detail on the interior, and the DMC logo is well represented on the front grille. The one disappointing aspect of this model is the license plate, which is an issue on all three variations here. The out of time license plate here comes in sticker form, but unfortunately it has been produced with a yellow background and not a movie accurate white background and I simply don't understand the decision here. The out of time license plate is such an iconic element of the original movie car. Why would you get a detail like that wrong? <laughs> Finally we get to the accessory with this version of the time machine coming with the famous lightning rod. This is a very well detailed accessory which plugs into the back of the DeLorean, but I must admit, the lightning rod seemed so fragile it was a nerve wracking experience fitting it to the car. I thought it was going to snap in half before I got it fully seated. The Back to the Future Part 2 DeLorean is fairly similar to the Part 1 version, with only a few of the details on the rear of the time machine being different. Once again we have a yellow license plate and although the colour is kind of correct this time, this version should have had the barcode style license plate as depicted in the movie. It's also a shame that the wheels don't rotate on this version to represent the Back to the Future Part 2 flying DeLorean, but I can understand why the company opted not to do this. The engineering involved in making a die-cast time machine that had rotatable wheels would have made this particular edition more expensive than the other two versions, so I imagine that the Welly company opted not to add this feature in order to sell all three model cars at the same price point. The accessory included with the Back to the Future Part 2 car is a miniature Mr. Fusion, which plugs into the back of the DeLorean and is a very nice touch in my opinion. The time machine from Back to the Future Part 3 is the most unique of the bunch, looking significantly different from the other two versions. First of all we have the 1950s style hubcaps and tyres, which Doc Brown has to fit to the time machine after he and Marty dig it out of an abandoned mine. The other distinct difference with this version is the time circuit control tube assembly that is strapped across the front bonnet of the DeLorean. This addition is nicely detailed and makes the time machine from Back to the Future Part 3 really stand out from the other two versions. Once again we have opening gullwing doors, and this version also features a Mr. Fusion accessory. But the strangest addition here is this black plastic frame mounted under the front of the car. I assume this is from the scene where Marty and Doc try to get the DeLorean up to 88 miles an hour using horsepower, but it's an unnecessary detail that we really didn't need. I also would have liked this model addition to include the jacked up front suspension that the time machine features in Back to the Future Part 3, but alas the suspension is the same as the other two versions. I wish I'd never invented that infernal time machine. 
If you're a Back to the Future fan and you can find these die-cast DeLoreans for a similar price to what I did, then I definitely recommend picking them up. I'm well aware that there are superior model versions of the time machine made by other companies, but for collectors who are on a budget, these are fantastic, and the set of three DeLoreans display very well together. I'm certainly pleased that I picked them up. And if my calculations are correct, when you add these to your collection, you're going to see some serious shit. So thank you all for watching, and if you'd like to see our top 10 countdown of other retro properties to never get a toy line, you can click right here. Or to check out our Toy Histories playlist, you can click right here. Now I'm going to make like a tree and get out of here.